Hello everybody, I'm Jackie K. Cooper and for today's Entertainment Rundown, I'm going to give you a rundown of my top movies for 2020. Now this list may change because I'm in critics groups that have pushed their schedule back. They're not presenting their awards until February or March and they're extending their boundaries of what movies qualify. But for this, these are the movies that I saw in 2020 and this is my list. Not going to be like the other list you probably see because my goal is to be entertained. I don't want to ever be bored. But you know, I like a variety of films, but I like movies that entertain me. And that's what the number 10 movie, I'm going to go in reverse order, the number 10 movie did for me. It's the film Let Him Go and it stars Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, Leslie Manville, Jeffrey Donovan, and then a great supporting role by Boo Boo Stewart. I just, I like this movie because it was a movie movie. And Kevin Costner really wasn't the star of the movie. Diane Lane's character was. She dominated the film. Kevin Costner underplays it. It's about two people married and their grandchild is in danger and they are determined to get that grandchild back no matter what the cost to them or anybody else. So a really movie, movie that you can just sink into and enjoy. Number 10, let him go. Number nine, Freaky. This was a film that was a bizarre takeoff on Freaky Friday movies, the one where the body swap, you know, the mother swaps with the daughter, etc. I think Lindsay Lohan did a version of that. Jodie Foster did a version of that. So, but this was a serial killer, male, and a high school student, female. Their bodies swap. His brain goes into her body, her body goes, her brain goes into his body. Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton are the stars. Vince Vaughn was amazing as the serial killer who suddenly has the brain of a high school girl. And it's just amazing to watch his performance. Again, this was the kind of movie that you could sit and watch and it was unique. You know, you, just, you think, how did they come up with this? This is amazing. And that's what I was looking for. I wanted something that was just out of the ordinary. And for me, Freaky did it. You know, congratulations to whoever created the script, whoever came up with it. But Freaky is my number nine film. My number eight film. From the first time I watched this, and I've watched it several times, I, I enjoyed it. There, there are three musicals on my list. I like musicals. This one's called Ode to Passion. And it was directed and written and everything else by Jack Danini. He's a talented person who's going to bring just amazingly creative uh, events to pass, you know, to, to occur in the future. But this was a love story. Boy meets girl, boy and girl break up, you know, boy and girl get back together, and then boy and girl, how, how does it end up? But it starred Giuseppe Basilio and Julia Nightingale. And it's an opera, in fact, because they sing everything and they're enjoyable songs and it's enjoyable music and, and it's dance and it's talent. It's just a celebration and I enjoyed it. Ode to Passion. It, it's the, it was the most romantic movie that, that, I, that I saw in 2020. So that's why it's on my list, that and the fact that it's a musical. Number seven, this is one that you know, I reviewed, I urged people to, to go see. It's called Working Man, and it stars a, a character actor by the, that I've seen in a million movies, Peter Garrity, and also Billy Brown and Talia Shire from the Rocky movies. Adrian! Talia Shire, that's who she was. But this is about a man who has spent his whole work, you know, life working in a factory. The factory shuts down you know, before he's at the age where he wants to retire, and he is lost. He doesn't know what to do, and so he he keeps going back to the factory every day. He's got his routine, and I understand people who love routine, because I love routine, but he has his routine, and his life is just obliterated without those edges to contain him. Peter Garrity does a fantastic job in this movie. He's outstanding. I'd love to see him get an award nomination or, or two, but who knows. But Working Man 
That's number seven. Number six, Driveways. I reviewed this movie a few weeks ago. It stars Brian Dennehy. It's his last film. He, he died soon after this film was completed. Uh, it's about a man uh, who lives in a house. His wife has died. His daughter, only child, lives you know, hours away. And the woman next, who lives in the house next to him, dies, and her sister comes to you know, clean out the house or whatever. She's played by Hung Chow. I think they got that name right, Hung, Hung Chow. And she has a little boy played by Lucas J. Just a fantastic little actor that he is. But the little, little boy is awkward. He doesn't make friends easily. But he finds, you know, a, 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 his soul friendship with the man who lives next door, played by Brian Dennehy. And it's about their relationship and how each helps the other cope with the life as it is where it is. So that's number six. That is driveways. So now we come to my top five. And number five is the trial of the Chicago Seven. I mean, this was about the riots at the 1968 Democratic National Convention and the trial of the protesters who were there who disrupted the convention in so many ways. But it is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, you know, a few good men, you know, a lot of TV series, The West Wing. I, I'm a really big Aaron Sorkin fan. And I also like the cast. It's Eddie Redmayne, Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, Borat fame, Mark Rylance, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and all of them are exceptional. And it, it just really, especially the times that we are living in now, to watch this trial and how it was handled is just a fascinating you know, bit of entertainment. That's number five. Number four, I haven't seen this movie on other lists. I don't know who's considering it as a TV production or is it a movie, but it's a Hamilton. You know, they filmed the stage play with all the original cast and presented it on Disney+. Plus. I don't know if it appeared in any theaters or not, but it was an event just like Trial of Chicago 7 was. Uh, but Hamilton, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda uh, did the music, and the music is unbelievable. He brought in the history. He had performance on top of performance that were outstanding. Um, you know, it, it was he was in it, plus Philippa Sue, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Leslie Odom Jr., David Diggs, and then... Jonathan Groff, who played King George, you know, the, the whole thing was worth seeing Jonathan Groff singing the song about You'll Be Back. So I put Hamilton on my top 10 list. It was number four. Number three, The Sound of Metal. It's about a musician played by Riz Ahmed, Ahmad and his girlfriend, Olivia Cook. They, they're performers, you know, just a, a little... Sing, he plays the drums. She, you know, she sings. You know, but then he finds that he is going deaf, and he has to. The movie is about how he begins to cope with losing his hearing. And Riz Ahmad is just amazing. He's my choice for you know best actor of the year for this performance. Also, Paul Rachi, who plays the man who heads up the you know the, the place where people can go to communicate and, and learn sign language, etc. He's also outstanding in the film and he's getting he is getting some notices, as, you know, as is the film. But I enjoyed this was a whole world that, that you aren't exposed to every day and seeing, you know, the the way that people do not consider the loss of hearing to be a disability per se, but it's just a challenge and it's the world that they live in. The Sound of Metal. That, that is my number three film. Number two, narrowing it down, One Night in Miami. And this was a movie about a night in Miami, you know, many years ago. This was when Cassius Clay was still Cassius Clay. He just had a, a big fight where he had been the champion. And he gathers with his three closest friends, Malcolm X, Jim Brown, Sam Cooke, they're all there, 
and it's conversations that they have. It's a talky movie, but it's important talk that they're talking about. And it stars Leslie Odom Jr., Aldous Hodge, Kingsley Ben Ader, and Eli, Eli Gorey. And it's directed by Regina King. She's directed TV things. She starred in movies, etc. This is her first directorial movie directorial debut, and she does an amazing job with this. And she gets the characters. It's just based on a play, but she opens it up. Again, it's talky, but it's important talk. It's interesting talk. You're not going to be bored. These are four dynamic personalities who I didn't know were close friends, but this says it's based on history, and that it is. Then the number one, da, 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 the number one film, my choice, and I just thought this film was a celebration of everything. It's a musical. It's called The Prom. It was about, based on the play, and it's about you know celebrities whose careers are kind of in alert, so they decide to take up some calls to get the publicity, not because they believe in it that much, and they find out that there's a girl in Indiana who wants to go to the prom, but she wants to take her girlfriend to the prom, and they're going to shut down the prom rather than let them go as a couple. So Meryl Streep, James Corden, uh, Andrew Rannells, Nicole Kidman, uh, Keegan-Michael Key, I mean, there is talent in this movie, plus the young couple is played by Joe Ellen Pellman and Ariana DeBose. And the songs are great, the story is great, the message is great, everything is great. I just, I've watched this movie over and over because I really enjoyed everything about it. So it is my choice for the number one film. So there you have it, my top 10 movies for the year of 2020. Let me know what your top 10 are or at least your number one movie. But for today, this has been Jackie K. Cooper's Entertainment Rundown, featuring a rundown of my choice for the top movies of 2020.